Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I am pulling for you with this really sweet card using reverse confetti stamps. On this card, I decided to really limit my color palette because I didn't feel like getting out a million markers and I wanted to keep it simple. There's a lot going on in the image because the stamp set itself has this bear who can hold a bunch of different things. He can hold knitting needles. And I say he, probably should say she. I don't know how many men actually do knitting, but there's a, a cute knitting sentiment in the set. And you can have the bear hold that, you can have the bear hold flowers, you can have him hold the leash, you can have him pull the wagon. And I decided I love the I'm pulling for you sentiment. And I want to send this to a friend who's going through some stuff and could probably use someone in her corner. So I thought this would be a fun card to send to her. And having the bear pull the other bear in the wagon, pulling the dog. And that seemed like a, it was kind of an interesting way of telling that little story that I'm pulling for you in several ways all at the same time. So limiting my color palette allows the story to be the focus and not necessarily like a million colors or creating a giant scene or that sort of thing. I wanted to keep it really focused on the message itself. And if I keep white space around that sentiment, it's gonna really help to draw attention to that rather than a whole lot of other things. So my light is coming from the right hand side and I'm creating a really nice dark shadow on the left. One of the things I love to do is create some, some really strong shadows on black bears because I love coloring black bears. Most people will color bears brown when they have an opportunity to color a bear or a dog. And I thought if they were all in that same black mode, that would be kind of a fun way to unite the whole card as well and not put too much color in, not make them all try to look like they're very different, but they're all one family. So the big bear and the little bear and the little dog are all gonna be black. And black bears, if you've studied them, they have like brown snouts and there's something about having a black bear with a brown snout that makes me happy. So that's what most of my bears are all the time. I used to live in Montana and had many encounters with black bears. Fortunately, none that cost me any limbs or anything, but had some, uh, some interesting adventures over those years that I lived there. So I love me some good black bears. So I'm just gonna add my next shading color and you can do this with fewer colors than I'm doing. I'm, I'm gonna use four different grays in order to create this roundness on each of my bears and my dog. But you can do that with less of them as well. But I wanted to kind of really build that roundness. You can also do it with more. There's some people that will use, you know, a strip of each one of the different grays to go from all the way from the lightest all the way to the darkest and it's up to you how many you want to use or how good your blending skills are to be able to make those lines in between each of those colors disappear but giving them a, a really each one of them a really nice strong contrast from the very darkest that c9 all the way to a c3 as the lightest gives you more roundness than just going three colors so i have a little more distance in the contrast between the lightest and the darkest shades when I use more colors. This little bear in the, the little wagon is just so cute. I can just picture him going wee wee like the little pig on the TV commercial if you've ever seen that one with the little pig who talks normally except for when he's doing the wee wee wee. It's rather an old commercial but always makes me think of that when I see anybody in a wagon or you know a little critter hanging out of a car window or something. I just always hear that in the back of my head. And this little bear could also be having the same amount of fun. Now I did forget to go in and finish his little paws, but have no fear that will be coming shortly. There's sometimes when things get missed along the way, but they'll get picked up later. Now for the faces and the wagon, I wanted to tie those together as well. So I'm using the same basic colors for that at this point at least, I will change my mind as time goes on. Uh, by the way, when I did the stamping for this, the wagon, I just blocked off the grown-up bear's one paw with a little piece of sticky note. 
and then stamped it. And so you can see that the bare actually stamps right through that line. I'm not worried about it because I knew I could fix it in my coloring. So whatevs, you know, just kind of tidy that up. You could also use a white pen to make it look like there's a highlight along the whole thing, but I didn't stress out about it too much. Using some of the same colors then to add some dimension to the snouts with the same shading on the left hand side of each one of them. But what I notice is that now the, if I were to use that same light brown in order to blend the whole little, uh, little wagon, then the wagon was gonna look a little too much like their snouts. So I'm just gonna glaze it with that really light coat just in a few areas of the E44. And that just dulled it down a little bit. So it has a little, takes a little less attention away from everything else. So next, I was trying to decide whether or not, there's me catching this little pause, I was trying to decide whether or not to do crazy coloring on the scarves, or whether I just wanted to keep them simple. And I decided keeping them simple. The adult bear and the baby bear are just going to have the same color scarf, and I'll add some very simple shading with just one color of a darker blue-green color. And the, even the little doggy is gonna have the collar in the same color. And then I thought, what's gonna happen if I try to make the ground, instead of trying to do a normal scene or anything, if I make it really simple by coloring it the same color as the scarves? Even if it's not a realistic color for the ground, it's gonna tie it into the rest of it. It's gonna make it feel really clean and simple because there's not a lot of color to it. Now, I did decide I wanted to add a little bit of grass in there just to make a small bit of scene. So I added just a tiny sparkle of a light green to create a little bit of grass. And that's it. I mean, just a few little strokes. And then my card base is the same color as the, the grass. You could also just use a white card base and do a strip of the same color of green. And that tied it together with the rest of the card, but left lots of airspace around the pulling for you sentiment. So this card achieved exactly what I was going for and I really enjoyed it. And I hope you did too. I will see you guys later on. Have a wonderful day and go make a card for somebody who really needs to hear from you because I know there's someone who could use your encouragement. Thanks so much for watching. Click that like button. All the supplies are in the doobly-doo and on the blog and I'll see you later.